if you take the example um, of electric cars, mm -hmm. um, obviously there's quite a push to use them because it's better for the environment. Yeah. Um, but some of the consequences are that a lot of children are actually um, forced into that mining, which is really dangerous and hazardous work. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Jamie and this is our first pilot episode in the new series which we're trying out which is Let's Talk About It, uh, where we'll be sitting down with various experts from within Hope for Justice. So today our first episode is about child labour and we're sitting down with Catherine. So can you tell me a little bit more um, sort of about what your role is in Hope for Justice and how long you've been working here? Sure, um, so I started at Hope for Justice in January of this year um, and my role is Programme Development Specialist. Mm -hmm. So um, what that means in simple terms is I'm responsible for the development of our new programmes. Um, so that might be programmes in new countries or new areas within countries where we haven't worked before. Um, or sometimes it's programming in new technical areas or looking at a slightly different focus for our work. Mm -hmm. These aren't just abstract programs, but they're actually, um, you know, changing the situation for real people um, and taking them out of a situation of real desperation um, into something that, that's much better, mm -hmm. um, where, where they can kind of progress and their life can um, slowly become better. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's... Yeah. That's the good thing about the job. Yeah. So it's challenging but definitely rewarding. Yeah, definitely yeah. <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So first question, just to kind of lay everything out there, what is child labour and how does it kind of differ from child exploitation? So I think it's helpful to distinguish between child labour and child work. Um, so the International Labour Organisation makes that distinction. Mm -hmm. um, so many of us might have worked when we were under 18. For example, in the UK, you can work from age 13 and a lot of us will have had paper rounds or jobs in cafes and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but child work, child work and child labour are different. So child labour is defined as work that is physically or mentally and morally or socially harmful to children or work that interferes with their education. Yeah, some people may have heard the term the worst forms of child labour, but what's that sort of actually mean? So the worst forms of child labour um, are defined as the types that are most harmful to children. So um, that might be things like um, commercial sexual exploitation, so the involvement of children in prostitution or production of pornography. Um, it might be the involvement of children in illicit activities such as drug trafficking um, and the practices that are similar to slavery. So that might be forced labour or mm -hmm. debt bondage um, or the recruitment of children or young people into armed gangs. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if all of our audiences will have heard of sort of hazardous forms of child labour, but what's the difference then between that and then the other forms that we've spoken about? Um, so hazardous child labour is work that is harmful to children. So, um, for example, work that involves um, psychological, physical or sexual abuse of children. It could be work that is dangerous because it's, um, for example, underwater at a mm. height or underground. Um, also work that um, is in a dangerous environment. So that involves chemicals or is at high temperatures, mm. um, work that involves carrying heavy loads. Um, so um, yeah, that, that kind of thing. Yeah. How many children are involved in child labour now around the world? So their um, estimates are that there are 160 million children around the world who are involved in child labour. Mm -hmm. And of those, around 79 million are involved in the um, most hazardous forms of child labour. And the majority of children um, who are in child labour are in sub-Saharan Africa. Wow, I feel like those numbers are actually pretty surprising. Yeah, pretty it's shocking. really staggering when yeah. you think about the scale of it. Yeah. Um, so would you say numbers of child labour increasing or decreasing? Like, Has the pandemic had any sort of impact on it at all? So um, worryingly, for the first time in 20 years, um, their progress um, on eliminating child labour is actually stagnating. Mm. Um, but I think that the figures actually mask regional differences. Um, so in certain locations, so in Latin America and in Asia Pacific, mm. um, the numbers are decreasing. But in sub-Saharan Africa, they're at 
actually increasing. And obviously the pandemic has had um, an effect on that because it's pushed more and more families into poverty. And um, as we know, a lot of schools have been closed for long periods, which puts more and more children at risk of child labour. Mm. So then what sort of factors would make a child vulnerable to, to child labour? So um, I think the first thing to say is that families or parents all around the world want what's best for their children. So nearly all parents want their children to have yeah. a better life than they have and to be educated and so on. Um, but there are a couple of factors that make children more vulnerable. So the first one is poverty and especially extreme poverty. Mm. And the second one is um, fam family breakdown. Um, so yeah, they, those are the factors that um, make children especially vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Which sectors would you say children are most vulnerable in for child, in terms of child labour? So about 70% um, of children who are involved in child labour, um, it's in the agricultural sector. Um, and that's quite worrying because agriculture, along with construction and mining, mm -hmm. is one of the more hazardous um, sectors for children to be involved in. Um, and then um, there's also um, an issue with new technologies. So um, we can see the kind of situation evolving all the time. So if you take the example um, of electric cars, mm -hmm. um, obviously there's quite a push to use them because it's better for the environment. Yeah. Um, but some of the consequences are that um, they use co cobalt um, in their batteries. Um, which is actually, I think about 70% of the cobalt in the world is mined from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of children are actually um, forced into that mining, which is really dangerous and hazardous work. Mm. Um, do you work with social services at all or any sorts of entities that are there to protect vulnerable children? Yeah, so in a lot of the countries that we work in, um, the frontline social services um, will be provided by a child protection committee, um, but that won't necessarily be um, paid or trained um, staff. So it, it's normally um, prominent people in the community, so maybe community leaders or religious leaders or teachers who are involved. Um, and sometimes on a voluntary basis. Mm -hmm. So they might not have been trained in international or national child protection standards. Um, so some of the work we do is training them on that, um, letting them know how to identify cases um, of child labor and where to refer those cases to. So um, perhaps social services or the police or the labor inspectorate. Um, so, yeah, we do that kind of training um, with, with those entities at community level. Yeah, it's great that you kind of work then with parents, children and those levels to really just try and cover all bases almost. Yeah, I think it's because it's quite a complex problem. Um, so you can't just really tackle it from one level. You need um, a holistic solution that's tackling it. Um, yeah, like you say, we're, with lots of involving lots of different people and at lots of different levels. So um, yeah, that's what we're doing through our programming. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, bringing Hope for Justice into it, how do we try and reduce some of the economic factors that can kind of contribute to child labour? So if we think of um, poverty as one of being, being one of the biggest factors that, that pushes um, children into child labour, um, then we work with the families um, to try and stop them from being in that desperate situation. Um, so some of the things we do are, um, for example, self-help groups. Um, so these are mainly with women um, and they are groups um, where there are um, savings and loans associations. So a small group of women will get together, um, put in a small amount of money mm -hmm. um, each week or month, and then they can use that um, either for savings or loans, um, wh which they normally use um, to grow maybe a small business or something like that. Yeah. Um, and we combine that approach with um, other educational sectors, so it might be on business skills um, or something related to their, their business. Mm -hmm. um, it might also be um, things like um, awareness of child rights or awareness of child labour and trafficking. We found that um, when children are empowered and have knowledge, they can actually spread that awareness um, amongst their peers. Um, so some of the things we're doing are um, child rights clubs, either in school or with youth groups. 
Um, and again, that's raising awareness um, about child rights, about child labour, um, uh, and things like that. And so, um, yeah, children have that information, so um, they're more likely to be able to protect themselves, mm -hmm. but then they can also um, share that information with their peers and also with their families. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of spreading awareness um, of the, the issue within the community. Yeah. yeah, so sort of working preventatively and like coming from the source. Exactly, yeah. because ideally what we want to do is support families before children um, get pushed into child labour. Yeah. So before, before it that, gets that point. Exactly, before that point of desperation. Mm. Thank you so much, Catherine, for coming through and you know speaking through this topic. I know it's so there's so many terms and definitions and so much information to take in, so it's really useful to kind of break it down. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Obviously, this is a brand new series, so do comment below whether you liked it. Uh, you can say if you didn't like it, but we'd rather you didn't. <laughs> uh, and if you've got any questions about the topic, you want to sort of know more about any of these sort of areas, then do let us know and we'll get back to you with some more information. And yeah, hopefully see you for another one. Bye.